Lit, and I'm making a special appearance on my own dog on channel. I'm here with you today in person, live from the She Shed, on a recording to let you know about an interview I had with the original creator of BET's Sunday Best. Now, before we get started, I do have to give my disclaimers, and I will say that basically everything I'm saying is allegedly. Shout out to Alexander Rogers with the Allegedly Show. Don't blame, don't sue. Now, in case you're not familiar with the Alexander Rogers, let me tell you who he is. Alexander Rogers is a professional stand-up comedian and the creator and originator of both the Allegedly Show and Pop Roast, which are both hilarious. If you want a good hot cup of celebrity tea, make sure you check out his Allegedly Show. And if you want a good kiki, then check out him and his co-host on Pop Roast. The links are in the description box and in the comments. All right, so I am here with Mark Wayne, and I am going to let him introduce himself to you all. So, Mark Wayne, if you could tell the people who are you and what do you do? Mark Wayne, I am a, um, you know, I run a video production company, um, do a lot of um, pitches, uh, networks, work with clients, um, high profile, um, some just personalities and you know, work behind the scenes a lot in the entertainment industry. He is the original creator of BET's Sunday Best. Yes. So can you tell us about that? Right. You are the original creator, but when you watch the show, it says from the creators of American Idol. In, uh, in 2005, I had uh, created a television show that I wanted to pitch to uh, BET. And in that show, it was going to be the singing competition. I wanted Kirk Franklin involved in the show to host the show. Uh, I wanted uh, a couple of other um, gospel artists to be judges on the show. And, you know, I gave them the real, uh, yeah, people singing competition. And after that, you know, after the season was over and we have the winners, after that, I would take them on a tour. You know, on, you know, I'm a writer, I'm a playwright as well. So I wanted to you know, kind of like Doug would get up, you know, where we have the season, and after that, when we're not filming, we'll be touring, um, you know, on the road with my play. What he has, how he's going to bring it upstairs. What you have for us today? Okay. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economy's down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah. I gave my um, idea to BET. BET, um, you know, I gave it in 2005, uh, in January, I submitted that. And in March, uh, you know, somebody had called me from Columbia uh, Studios on my caller ID, you know, and I answered it, and it was Rodman Latica Johnson with BET. Okay. So full full name one one more time, Robin. Because <laughs> I noticed you said her full name. What is it? Robin Latica Johnson. Okay. She was the uh, senior vice president of original content at that time for BET, and so you know she had identified to me who she was, mm -hmm. and I said, "Oh, okay, great." And she was like, "You know, she had got my my pitch, and she loved it, and that she would love to do the show." So you know, I'm excited. You know, I got her on speakerphone. My, my brother and I were listening to her talk. And, you know, she's saying, uh, we reached out to Kirk Franklin. Uh, we got him, you know, uh, on the line. Uh, and, of course, we let him know what the show is. And, you know, he he just wanted to make sure that it wasn't low budget or anything like that. And he wanted to stress to them that he can't be on something that was going to look like 
a home video or just too low budget. So right. it had to be, it had to come correct. It had to be big. It had to be nice. It had to be the same like other brand shows on other networks or so. Which is understandable. Kirk Franklin saying that he didn't want to be a part of anything that looked like a home video or looked low budget is understandable. So where did it go from there? Oh, I'm excited at this point. You know, I got a TV show coming in. We're talking about Kirk Franklin. Uh, we're talking about, you know, um, for me, I created a show. Um, and, but she said I would also be, I would be the uh, creative consultant for the show. In my head, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be a creator, I'm going to be a producer, I'm going to be a creator because it's talking. I got all these credits, I got everything happening. I wasn't thinking anything else, you know. I was just listening, writing down everything that she's saying. So, so at, at this point, sorry to stop you, but at this point, just for um, people watching, at this point, he's pitched a show and the um, title that he's been given, they're, they're receptive to the show, they want to do the show, and the title that he's been given is Creative Consultant. So, it, but it didn't register at that time, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that, hey, I have another credit. That's in my head. So, you know, she's telling me on how they're getting sponsors and getting the budget situation taken care of. It's going to be about four uh, to six weeks to make this happen. Uh, it's going to be, you know, um, uh, you know, some time to put it together, but it's happening. All this great stuff, you know. And then she told me that she actually from Tacoma, Washington, where I was living at, you know. And that's a, key, that's a key element in this, the fact that the uh, BET uh, representative, Robin, is from Tacoma. You're living in Tacoma in the yeah. winner. The ultimate winner of season one of American Idol was from Tacoma. That plays a key part in how this all happened. I was excited. I didn't know who she was because I was originally uh, from Tacoma. So, you know, if I was from Tacoma, I would probably know who she was, but I didn't know. And then she wasn't living in Tacoma at that time, but she said she was from Tacoma at her stomping ground. She gave me the high school that she went to, which was um, Falls High School. And so I'm really pumped. Like, this is really happening. And she was like, I want something great to come from Tacoma, and I'm going to put Tacoma on the map with this show. Okay. So it sounds some, good. It sounds good. Some, yeah. some, I'm going crazy because I actually have a TV show in the making. I'm talking to the network. I'm talking to the person who selects the shows and chooses the shows. And you know at the same time I'm being cool on the phone. That way I'm just calm. I'm trying to get all the information, all this great stuff. Uh you know we didn't talk about salary like, like that, but she said that, you know Normally, sometimes when people, you know, they get a TV show, they think if they have a million dollars right away, she said, that's not going to happen. But this is going to be a great start for your career because this show is going to be a hit. So I was excited about it. I was like, okay, cool. I understand that, you know, I, when we start, she said, we'll be get, get going with everything in four to six weeks. Okay. So with me also doing, you know, Oscar Musical Plays, I have and I've had the best gospel singers in Tacoma and Seattle in my shows. So I knew all the powerhouses. I talked to her about Crystal Aiken. I said, Crystal Aiken is phenomenal. This girl is bad. You know, um, she, you know I talked about William Gimps. William Gimps actually was on, uh, I don't know, season six. He, he was actually a contestant. Later on down the road on Sunday Best. Um, I talked about Robin Henderson, a powerhouse. I talked about April Mason. These singers, I had the best of the best in my play. Right. Um, so basically, you're t he's telling them who's hot in Tacoma, basically. Right. Okay. Uh, well, the uh, Loretta, Loretta Edwards, who was the um, acquisition manager, who told me what I needed to do to submit my project to them. She said, whatever you have, we want to see everything, you know, put it out there because you got to look at this, this is your only shot. So anything that had to do with, um, with your show, with your competition, kind of like who I was, I'm a playwright as well, but I got this beautiful idea and putting the church and gospel singer on the map and, you know, doing stuff like that. I, I, I laid everything out. Yeah. You know, it was my first show. I never created anything. So this was all a my first time figuring out everything, how I'm going to do this. 
what can I do to make it look really nice? And here you go. Okay, so after they told him it would be four to six weeks to get the ball rolling, then after the six week period, it was kind of like they had him um, hanging on basically. And so once it reached about a year, he got the phone call that they decided to pass. So if you're wondering how he got left out of this deal, it's, be it's because they told him they would pass on the deal. So they told you they would pass, and then walk us through what happened in those next months or year so, after yeah. they told you they would pass. All this excitement that everybody excited for, and dropped me out for one year. Hmm. Okay. So eventually we got signed to eventually in the radar, to eventually, you know, we go ahead and, and we're going to pass on your show. A year or so goes by, a year, you know, because they dropped me a year. A year goes by, and they tell me, um, they tell me that uh, I, I'm getting text messages, and it's Sunday best promo. Okay. Congratulations, congratulations, I'm happy for you. And I'm what you're talking about. I, I didn't even know what Sunday Best was. Okay. Yeah, because you had a different title. At right. The yeah. Here. So I opened the link and I see from the makers of American or from the producers of American Idol, Kurt Franklin, they run a promo. You have Krista Aiken on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All they see is happening. But yet, Mark Wayne was not attached or a part of the show at all. So they couldn't even respond or, you know, we got things going on. We passed in your show. This is not whatever it might be. They basically hung up. And, you know, when I tried to call back again, no one ever answered my call. Yeah, all of a sudden, they're not available. For the first, you know, four to six weeks when they're saying that they're going to work with him, they're available. He has access to their assistant. But yeah. once... They actually put the show out there, which was clearly his idea. Now they're not available. They can't take his call. All in Tacoma, all in Seattle are, are um, you know, celebrating mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And I came out and said, no, they stole my show. It would have seemed like I was hating on Crystal and throwing salt on everybody else's parade. It's, so I was stuck. I didn't know what to, I didn't know who, who I could talk to because everybody was cheering her on. The whole city was happy, news, everything. But uh -huh. I come in I'm from Tacoma, and I'm saying, y'all sold my show. I don't care who won. Then I'm going to go look like the I'm going to be the gobble to the church. Mm -hmm. you know, That's right. one of the reasons um, that I wanted to share this on my channel. Like you said, you wanted to help other people avoid the situation. And I've talked about a situation similar to this before with Tatiana Ali, who sued the producers of The Real because she said she actually pitched that show to uh, the WB Network, Warner Brothers Network, but yet when she, she went through the lawsuit process, but because she, she, she filed it as if it was a trade, a trade secret that basically she shared with them her secret, her idea for a show, and they went on to do the show without her, but she lost in her lawsuit because ideas are not protected by, by trade laws. Like formulas are protected and things like that, but ideas are not protected. So there's not always a legal recourse. But at the same time, he did want to share how people, if they're pitching to different networks, even if it's not a television network, even if it's just a, an entity bigger than you, how can you yeah. protect yourself? Right. And uh, it's like, you... you, you... Uh, I, like I said, that was my first one. You know what I mean? Now, working with people, working with clients, uh, you know, I'm making, I'm making sure that all my force is intact, together, written communication, mm -hmm. open, you know, everything, okay? there's no, no secret with me. Everything is all open, you know what I mean? Send me an email. I need confirmation. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Documentation. I'm presenting this idea. Can you sign another disclosure? And yeah. stuff like that. I need to know that you know that you're receiving my product and I'm not here to have you create something that's similar to it. So right. you can form like that all together. Yeah. Uh, I'm speaking out so somebody else can speak out right now. You know what I mean? Like, now, just like in that same light, you know, with everything else, I'm courageous with everything else, you know, in defending people and protecting people and making sure that everybody else is taken care of and not as time to take care of me emotionally and spiritually. That way I can hear, it's like somebody killing you in a church. 
you know, trying to find that space of how can I get over them because I still have to deal with me. You know what I mean? So I think that, that's kind of like, you know, inspiration. And then you have, um, you know, uh, 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 Kirk Franklin said, you know, come out and speak. If you, if you stand for this, you know, that's voting cop. Yes, you know, and I'm not saying anything about voting cop, but what I'm saying is, you know, that's courageous for him to say, you know what I mean? Even though he was after he won another award, you know, it's those courageous acts, you know, for me, it's like, it's powerful, you know. Okay.